We're so used to constantly charging something, smartphones, laptops, watches, etc. But are we doing it right? And the web is full of contradictory information. Someone recommends putting smartphones on charge at night. Some people say to charge only up to 80%. And some, imagine this, generally charge 5 to 10% several times during the day and store the battery in the refrigerator. How harmful is fast charging? And in general, there are lots of questions. Therefore, we've decided to research the topic and have prepared for you the most detailed analysis about batteries. Spoiler alert, the answers will not please you. We promised this video. You asked about it in the comments, so prepare some popcorn and your favorite soda. This is Droider, and I'm Boris Vidensky. Let's get started. Let's go! And to begin with, there are three unpleasant facts. The first one, if you're charging your smartphone right now, then you're slowly destroying its battery. But don't rush to take out the charger, because fact number two. If you don't charge your smartphone, but just use it right now, you're still slowly ruining the battery. And my favorite fact number three, even if you don't use your smartphone, turn it off, put it in the nightstand, you're still slowly ruining the battery. Yeah, that's it. The fact is that each charge-discharge cycle inevitably changes the internal structure of the battery at the physical level and spoils it. For example, batteries in modern smartphones lose 20% of their capacity on average after 500 full charge-discharge cycles. This is about one and a half to two years of work. Moreover, the process accelerates over time, so the next 20% of the battery will lose even faster. But there's still good news. The fact is that you and I can influence the rate of degradation of the battery and increase the number of working cycles from 500 to about 1,000. But to answer the question of how to do this, let's figure it out how the magic jar of energy really works. So, all batteries work due to a chemical reaction, the exchange of electrons between atoms. Well, how does it work? In any battery, there are two rooms, an anode and a cathode. An anode is a room with a negative charge, cathode is with a positive one, and these rooms aren't empty. Anode contains graphite, while cathode contains cobalt oxide. But the most important substance inside the battery is lithium ions. It is lithium that gives its electrons and feeds the energy of our devices. That's why batteries are called lithium ion. But the trick is that lithium gives us energy not because it's such an altruist, there is a slippery guy who is constantly looking for a more comfortable place. And this is how it happens. When the battery is fully charged, lithium is resting inside the anode. There are convenient, in the chemical sense, hexagonal cells of carbon atoms in graphite which is prepared for lithium. It would seem enjoying life hanging out inside the anode, but no, because there is a cathode nearby, filled with even more comfortable crystal lattice of cobalt oxide where lithium can go, and it really wants to integrate, but it can't. Why? Because there is a barrier between the cathode and the anode, a liquid electrolyte. And the thing is, is that it passes only positively charged particles, or cations, through itself. Therefore, lithium faces the following task. In order to pass through the electrolyte, it really wants to become positively charged. And for this, it's necessary to give an electron somewhere, and that's exactly what we need. Therefore, if we connect the minus and the plus of the battery into an electrical circuit, then the electrons will begin to separate from the lithium atoms and move from minus to plus, along the way feeding energy and all the components of the device. And lithium, in turn, will pass through the electrolyte and will embed into the crystal lattice of cobalt oxide. This is how the battery is discharged, but how can we charge the battery? To do this, we sort of reverse the process, so we apply an electric current with a voltage higher than that of the battery. Electrons begin to flow back from the cathode and fill the anode with electrons, which literally forces the positively charged lithium ions to return back into graphite. Magic! Everything is very simple and ingenious. By the way, for the invention of the lithium ion battery, these three gentlemen received the Nobel Prize only in 2019. But, as I said, all these electrochemical reactions do not pass without a trace. What's really going on here? Firstly, lithium ions passing through the electrolyte that's in the middle get stuck there and form a kind of film, which thickens over time and eventually becomes impenetrable. Secondly, cobalt oxide produces oxygen atoms over time, which leads to oxidation. And by the way, this is what causes batteries to swell. But, fortunately, you and I can minimize the negative consequences by managing two factors, charging speed and temperature. How does it work? Let's start with the temperature. Firstly, batteries do not like it when it's too hot or too cold. In operation mode, everything is still not so bad. We can use the battery in the cold up to minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit and in the heat up to 122 degrees, but not for long and only if the battery is additionally protected by extreme temperatures. But it's still possible. But you can charge the battery strictly at plus temperatures, not lower than 50 degrees and not higher than 113. Remember this. 
Why? If we talk about negative temperatures, you probably notice that in the cold, the battery sometimes loses capacity or refuses to work at all. This is because the electrochemical reaction slows down at sub-zero temperatures. During normal operation, there's nothing wrong with this. It does not spoil the battery in any way, but if charging is carried out at low temperatures, then most of the lithium ions, instead of penetrating into the graphite anode, settles on its surface. This is also called a galvanic reaction. Therefore, even a single charge of the battery in the cold will inevitably lead to a decrease in capacity by tens of percents and a significant increase in resistance. Moreover, a battery charge in the cold is not safe. It can explode due to the vibration or just high level of charge. Therefore, we do not recommend doing this. And if you just came in from the cold, wait until the device warms up before charging. What happens at high temperatures? Well, on the contrary, the reaction accelerates and oxygen atoms separated more quickly from cobalt oxide. That leads, as we've already said, to oxidation and swelling. In other words, nothing good as well. Therefore, you should not put the phone under direct sunlight, charge it more than 86 degrees Fahrenheit, or even during intense gaming sessions if you feel the smartphone case has warmed up. The second important point is voltage. This is important because we need to control the charging speed. So, for this reason, batteries do not like it when they are fully charged or completely discharged. Why? First, let's consider a situation where the battery is discharged, the voltage inside it is too low, and if you start pouring too much energy into it, then, due to the voltage surge, the reaction rate will be very high and a rapid increase in temperature will occur, and then a fire and explosion may occur. This can be compared to a dam bursting. Therefore, if your smartphone is discharged to zero and you connect it to charging, then the built-in controller limits the charge speed for a while in order to somehow equalize the voltage. And after that, faster charging begins. The reverse situation occurs when fully charged. As the battery is filled with energy, the voltage inside it increases and, accordingly, the resistance and, as a result, the temperature increases. Therefore, in order to avoid warming up when reaching 80%, the charging speed always decreases Always. You probably noticed that the last percentages when charging are especially difficult. By the way, rapid discharge is also harmful to the battery in the same way. If you're playing some kind of resource-intensive game and the phone is heated and discharged from 100% to zero in an hour and a half, you know such a battery will not work long term. Well, we've sorted out the battery theory. Here, you can already click the like, bell, and subscribe. And now, we've come to practice. Well, okay, now you and I know all the process taking place in the battery, and finally, we're able to figure out exactly how to charge a smartphone. We have three options. The first, from 0 to 100%. The second, from 20 to 80%. And the third, a little bit during the day. And I think you've already guessed that charging from 0 to 100% isn't the best option. Because when the battery is completely full, this is its most unstable state. When the battery wear accelerates, the risk of overheating increases, and all of this reduces its life cycle. This is why electric cars are always charged only up to 80%. This extends the service life for years to come. Therefore, our favorite operating scheme of the smartphone is discharged to zero and set to stay overnight. It's actually a trashy idea. Moreover, when we leave it to charge overnight, another unpleasant thing happens. The battery can additionally wear out due to microseconds of charging. When the smartphone is charged to 100%, then it stops and drops a little to like 99, and the charging turns on again, and so on. This is why Apple and other companies are implementing optimal charging. It stops at 80% so that the rest of the time the battery is up to 100% very slowly. Thus, even those minuscule charging discharge cycles that take place in an already charged device are excluded. By the way, it's also not useful to store the battery for a long time at zero charge. Therefore, if you have a spare, it's better to charge it up to 40 or 50% so it lasts longer. Let's move on. Charging scheme 20 to 80%. What's wrong with it? Well, it looks much more attractive. And there's an opportunity to use it because many modern smartphones already have a large battery reserve. And it's not always necessary to charge up to 100%. And an application like AccuBattery will help you monitor the charge, but only on Android. But the fact is that this approach is not ideal as well. If you want to set a world record for service life, then it's better to keep the charge around 50 to 70% constantly, slowly charging during the day. Yeah, and it will extend the battery life many times. In general, a docking station with wireless charging is well suited for such a scheme. But there is a nuance. The fact is that the efficiency of modern electronic chargers is about 60%. It means that the rest of the energy goes into heat. Therefore, it is worth using such a scheme only in a room that's not hot. And if you're tolerant to energy overspending, it seems that you can exhale completely. As if you figured it out, but no. Not really. There's another problem, because most manufacturers are now trying to charge smartphones quickly. 
And the problem with fast charging is that, unfortunately, it's harmful. And we know about it thanks to artificial intelligence. A large-scale study was published in The Nature magazine last year, which was conducted by scientists from Stanford, MIT, and the Toyota Research Institute. Their goal was to find a method of charging the battery of an electric car in 10 minutes, which would maximize the battery life. To do this, artificial intelligence analyzed 224 existing fast charging protocols. Yeah, yeah, there are about as many of them. And the trouble is that they come to the conclusion that all the existing fast charge protocols are completely wrong. The problem turned out to be that most profiles use the same direct current when charging up to 70 to 80 percent. And only then there is a gradual decline. But it turned out that as a result of the study, they managed to create the perfect profile for charging. It charges the battery up to 80% in 10 minutes and extends the battery life from 600 to 800 cycles to 1200. The profile is arranged something like this. At the beginning, there are several independent charging cycles with high current. Then from 80% to 90%, there is a constant current charge. And until fully charged, a voltage of 3.6 volt is used. In general, it remains to be seen until smartphone manufacturers introduce such profiles into their devices. Well, then five-year-old androids on Avito will store in price. If you want to study the research yourself, then there is a link to it and the source code in the description. Now we come to the conclusion. In short, it turns out something like this. First, avoid extreme temperatures, high and low. Second, charge the battery frequently. Third, do it only when it does not fall to zero and does not rise to 100%. I hope it was useful and interesting for you. At least, this is exactly the goal we stood for today. Don't forget about the likes, the subscription bells, so then such videos will come out more often. I'm Boris Vidansky, this has been Droider, see you in the next videos. Instead of the announcement, today is a survey. Write in the comments what large-scale and exciting topic should we cover next. Write and like some interesting comments.